The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, makes Philadelphia brand cream cheese. The cream cheese that's been famous for quality since 1880. Delicious, creamy white Philadelphia brand is so popular, it outsells all other brands of cream cheese combined. Enjoy it often. Just be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand when you buy. Look for the Red Craft K on the silvery package. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand cream cheese, and it's made by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. Well, it's the evening before Thanksgiving, and Summerfield, like many other places, is blanketed with snow. The great Gildersleeve walked home through it as part of his training for his bout with old Tom Turkey tomorrow. And we might add that the water commissioner is in the pink of condition. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Oh, hello, Anki. Well, Marjorie. Say, that's a tantalizing aroma coming from the kitchen. Uh Uh-huh. Bertie's cooking the turkey for tomorrow. Good. I think I'll go back and take a look at it. Now, Anki, don't start sampling it tonight. No, I won't. That turkey isn't going to get the best of me this time. In fact, I plan to eat light. Light meat. <laughs> Hello, Bertie. Evening, Mr. Gillespie. Hi, Unc. Leroy, what are you doing over there by the oven? Me? Leroy's watching the turkey, and I'm watching Leroy. <laughs> it's a good idea. Unky's here now, Bertie. You better double the watch. Yes, ma'am. Everybody stand back now. Bertie's going to baste it. Uncle, we got a 24-pound turkey. Say, isn't he a whopper? 24 pounds and five of us to eat it. Oh, boy, that's nearly five pounds apiece. Um, Bronco and I may not be here for dinner, Anki. He's trying to get tickets for the football game tomorrow in Center City. Oh, that's too bad. We'll miss you, my dear. Well, you know how Bronco is about a football game. Yeah. It was such a big dinner. And we ought to invite somebody to share it with us. Leroy, there's a pretty little girl staying at Mr. Bullard's. You mean invite Babs? You, yeah, why not? Yes, why not? The pretty little girl has a pretty mother, Auntie. You well, naturally, if we invite Babs, we should invite her mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give along, Leroy. Let's slip on our overshoes. Having snow on Thanksgiving, Unc. Yeah, makes things pretty cozy. Right, George, I'm glad I thought about asking Paula and Babs over. What if Mr. Bullard won't let them come? No, Leroy, Mr. Bullard doesn't boss everything. It's none of his business if his sister wants to spend Thanksgiving with friends. Since when has Mr. Bullard considered you a friend? (laughs) My boy, it's Thanksgiving. It's the time when we should all be friends. Okay. While you ring your friend's doorbell, I'll cover you with a snowball from behind this tree. <laughs> Careful, Leroy. You sure make a good target against that poor twite, huh? No, Leroy. Turn sideways and I'll knock the ashes off your cigar. Leroy, watch it. Oop, here it comes. <laughs> Yo, Bullard's window. Run, Bullard, on! Leroy, you shouldn't run. What's going on out there? Guess I'd better run. What are you kids... Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. A big fat kid. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bullard. Gildersleeve, did you break my window? No, but I'll gladly pay for it. Leroy was aiming at me and missed, but I'll pay for it. If he'll aim again at you and hit, I'll pay for it. <laughs> now, Mr. Bullard, I'm sorry it happened. It was an accident. Fortunately, it's just a pane out of the storm window. Gildersleeve, why did you come over in the first place? Well, I came over to see if I couldn't take your sister and little Babs off your hands for Thanksgiving. They're spending the holiday out of town. They are? I didn't know Paula was planning a trip. Should you have been consulted? Well, no, not necessarily. (laughs) But she might have said goodbye. Now that you mention it, she did leave a message for you. You? What was it? She said goodbye. (laughs) So, goodbye. Wait a minute. Mr. Bullard. 
you don't mind, I'll talk to you through the peephole. It's cold out there. <laughs> well, I brought the broken window. You shouldn't pay for the pain. Gildersleeve, I've been paying for a pain ever since you moved across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Even on Thanksgiving, he's a hard man to like. breaking his window? No, Leroy. You could take it out of my allowance. Say, a nickel a week? Every other week? <laughs> no, I'll take care of it, my boy. Thanks, I'll get swell. I'm going up now and take my bath without even being sent. Good boy. Yeah, I shouldn't have gone over to Bullard's anyway. You'll never set foot on his porch again. Yeah, I guess I will have to go over and pay him. Someday. Yeah, I'll put the money on a stick and poke it through the people so he can't bite my hand. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve. Yes, Bertie? Will Mr. Bullard's sister and little Babs be here for dinner tomorrow? No, they're out of town, Bertie. Unless Mr. Bullard has them locked up in the attic. Yes, sir. You're fooling, ain't you? Yes, I guess so. Bertie already put their names in the pot. Too bad they can't be here. If Miss, Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco go to that football game, we're going to have more dinner than we know what to do with. Well, Leroy and I will do our best by it. Oh, I'm counting on you and Leroy to eat double. But we're loaded. Of course, a lot of people ain't going to have a big Thanksgiving. Well, true, Bertie. A lot of people's just going to squeak by. We're pretty lucky, Bertie. Yes, sir. I've been thinking about that while I was basting that big turkey, Mr. Kelsey. Yes, Bertie? You remember the little boy that wandered in here from the children's home last Halloween? You, Mike Smith. That's right. The little lost ghost. Cute kid. Say, I wonder what kind of Thanksgiving dinner he's going to have. Oh, you have a good dinner, but he may not have as much as we've got. Bertie, after church in the morning, why don't I drive over and pick up little Mike? Yes, sir. Now we're lining up a real Thanksgiving. Yeah, come to think of it, Thanksgiving is no good if you don't share it. That's what the Indians did. <laughs> On the first Thanksgiving, they had a lot of food, and they shared it with the pilgrims. Well, the Indians have nothing on the water, Commissioner. The little pilgrim will be the guest of Big Chief Running Water. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> Good evening, Judge. Evening, Bertie. Well, Judge, come in. Hello, Gildy. I didn't want to be late for Thanksgiving dinner, so I thought I'd come and spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'd love to have you, Horace. But you told me you had an engagement. As a matter of fact, I have. So I dropped by to bring a little sweet meat for your festive board tomorrow. Oh? Here you are, Bertie. Thank you, Judge. What's in this jar? It's cranberry relish that I prepare myself. <laughs> you make cranberry relish, Judge? Yes, indeed. I didn't know you so handy around the kitchen. Well, Bertie, I spend most of my idle hours on culinary experiments. I'm writing a cookbook. Yofer. I think it's nice the judge is so handy in the kitchen. Thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. The judge is a handy man. He spends his working hours with the law book and his idle hours with the cookbook. That's about it, Bertie. Yes, sir. Mr. Gillsleeve, that's why the judge can come up with cranberry relish. He spends his working hours with the law book and his idle hours with the cookbook. Yeah, I know, Bertie. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know why the judge can come up with cranberry relish? Yes, Bertie. That's right. He spends his working hours with the law book and his idle hours with the cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, you have quite an admirer in Bertie. Well, the feeling is mutual, Gildy. I'm sorry I won't be here to sample Bertie's Thanksgiving dinner. Well, Marjorie and Bronco may not be here either. But I'm inviting little Mike from the children's home. Ah, oh, the little fellow who was lost on Halloween. Yeah, Mike's going to be our guest of honor. <laughs> Gildy, you're a shining example of the spirit of Thanksgiving. Well, that's not all I planned to do. I went over to invite Mrs. Winthrop and Babs, but the old Bullard said they were out of town. Oh, so Rumson is spending Thanksgiving alone? I didn't ask him, Judge. I don't care where he spends it. Well, I know Rumson Bullard is difficult at times, but he's a lonely man. I think he wants to be alone. I'm not so sure, Gildy. Perhaps we just don't understand him. I know I don't. Be that as it may, at a time when the peoples of the world are divided, suspicious, and working at cross-purposes, 
It seems the least we can do is set an example of amity and accord here at home. You have. Chances are the world could achieve more harmony around the Thanksgiving table than around the conference table. You're probably right, Judge. I hadn't looked at it that way. You're right, George. I'll invite Bullard tomorrow. Well, it's nice of you to join us for dinner today, Mike. It's nice of you to invite me, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> you will have a lot of fun. Yeah, I didn't think to ask Mrs. Foster when I should bring you home. Just take me back when I'm good and full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's plenty to eat, all right. Bertie has a turkey almost as big as you are. I don't know if I can eat that much. <laughs> well, I'll help you. You ought to be a big help. <laughs> I wonder how he meant that. A lot of us kids are going out for dinner today. You're good. Boy, I like Thanksgiving. How many times a year does it come? Well, only once, Mike. But Christmas will be here soon. Yeah, that's when Santa Claus comes. Yeah, I'll bet you get a lot of presents. Yeah, Bobby's even getting a mother and father for Christmas. You? Who's Bobby? He's my friend. Yeah, I see. Well, here we are. Remember this house? This is where you found me when I got lost. <laughs> that's right. I sure was dopey to get lost. Well, if you had to get lost, we're glad you picked our house. Thank you. Oh, before we go in, Mike. Let's go across the street and ask someone else to dinner. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to invite the man who lives in this big house. He's all alone today. But that big house, why is he all alone? You well, Mike, you know how it is. Do I? You well, this man's a little difficult to understand. It seems he hasn't many friends. Why? Well, sometimes he isn't as nice to people as he could be. But we're going to be nice to him. You see, I feel sorry for Mr. Bullard. Is that his name? Yes, yeah, that's his name. Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. Good morning, Mr. Bullard. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bullard, I'd like you to be a little friend of mine, Mike Smith. Well, how do you do, young man? Hello, Mr. Bullard. Uh, little Mike's from the children's home. He's having dinner with us. Yeah, turkey. Oh, splendid. I hope you enjoy your dinner, Mike. Uh, Mr. Bullard? Yes? Yeah? I'd like you to join us, if you will. Me? Well, that's very thoughtful of you. You well, are, Mr. Bullard. It's Thanksgiving, and you're all alone. Yeah, and Mr. Gildersleeve says you don't have very, very many friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh? Uh, well, uh, what I meant was... For your information, Gildersleeve, I have countless friends. I'm having dinner today at my club. Yeah, Mr. Bullard, let's not have another misunderstanding. I really wish you'd come with us. Yeah, Mr. Gildersleeve feels sorry for you. <laughs> oh, is that so? Gildersleeve, I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. You enjoy your dinner, I'll enjoy mine. Good day. <laughs> Mike, what are you going to do with a fellow like that? Mrs. Foster would send him to bed without any dinner. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Want to make luscious, rich frostings and smooth, perfect fudge every time? Fudge and frostings that are bound to be perfect, that need no cooking? You can do it a brand new way, a way you've probably never thought of. You do it with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. That's right. Philadelphia brand cream cheese is the magic ingredient that makes fudge and frosting more delicious, more consistently perfect than ever before. Have a pencil and paper handy, and in just a minute I'll tell you where to write for your free, that's right, free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for making wonderful fudge and frostings with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Now, maybe you're thinking that fudge and frosting made with cream cheese would have a cheese flavor, but they don't. Wonderful Philadelphia brand cream cheese gives you fudge and frosting with a perfect, delicate, rich taste. 
because Philadelphia cream cheese is made with fine milk and thick cream. This fudge and frosting has a special freshness, too, because Philadelphia brand cream cheese is guaranteed fresh by Kraft. And Philadelphia brand gives fudge and frosting a truly marvelous texture, never grainy, never too hard, never too soft, but always smooth. Just be sure you use genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Look for the red Kraft K that's on every silvery package of genuine Philadelphia brand. Remember, genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese is made only by Kraft. Now to get your free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for Philly fudge and frostings, simply drop a postcard to Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. That address again, Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. Right tonight. Well, the great Gildersleeve has caught the Thanksgiving spirit. He invited little Mike from the children's home. He even invited Big Bad Bullard to share his turkey, but Bullard insisted on not coming. Now it looks like there will be several empty places at the table. Uncle Mort. Yes, Marjorie? I'm leaving now. Bronco got tickets for the book football game. Oh? Uh-huh. He's down getting gas, and I'm going to meet him out front. We're a little late. Well, sorry you can't be with us for dinner. But before you go, I want you to meet little Mike. Mike? You, yeah, Mike? He's in here with me testing the turkey, Mr. Gillsleeve. You don't spoil his dinner, Bertie. No, sir. You better send him in. I want Marjorie to see him. Who did you want to see me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, Mike, this is my niece, Marjorie. Hello, Mike. Hello. What's a niece? Uh, well, in this case, she's somebody I'm uncle to. Are you here for dinner, too? Well, I live here, but I can't be here for dinner. You'll excuse me, won't you? Well, I don't know. She and her husband are going to a football game, Mike. Would you rather see a football game than eat turkey? <laughs> no, but our college is playing. Isn't anybody going to eat Thanksgiving dinner with us? Well, Leroy will be here. He's over on the hill with his sled. Well, what about Mr. Bullard, Unky? He expressed regrets. Bullard style. He's all alone. <laughs> we feel sorry for him. You feel sorry for him. Okay. Uh-oh, oh, that's Bronco. Well, Mike, I'm awfully glad you came. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Marjorie. <laughs> Mike, it's just plain Marjorie. But you've got a husband. That makes you Mrs. <laughs> well, I'll still be Marjorie to you. Goodbye, Auntie. Ta-ta, my dear. What'll we do now, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, it's quite a while until dinner, and I'm out of cigars. Why don't we drop by Mr. Peavy's and then join Leroy for a sled ride? Okay. Shall we go back and help Bertie taste the turkey before we go? Well, I guess we could take a little sliver where it won't show. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? I need some cigars, Peavy. I took a chance on your being open today. Well, I'm closing in a little while. Your uh, usual brand? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Peavy, aren't you going to say hello to Mike? Is she here? Yeah. Well, I didn't see you down there below the counter. Hello, Mikey. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Uh, here, Mike. Let me lift you up on one of these stools. Uh, I can climb up. He's having Thanksgiving dinner with us, Peavy. Oh, you don't say you care to have a soda on the house, Mike? No, I guess it is for your dinner. Huh? He didn't give me a chance to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better save up. We have a big dinner to take care of. There aren't many people eating with Mr. Gildersleeve and me. Well, Marjorie and Bronco are going to the game over in Center City, Peavy. Well, if it was 40 years ago, I'd go out there and sit in the snow myself. Mr. Gildersleeve, can I whisper something? You, Al? Excuse us, Peavy. <laughs> Very well. What is it? Why don't we ask Mr. Peavy over for dinner? Well, that's a nice thought. I'm sure his dinner's all planned, but why don't you ask him? Okay. Mr. Peavy? Oh, am I included now? Yes. 
Would you like to come over and help us eat our turkey? Well, I'll be eating at home, Mike, but thank you just the same. That's all right. I thought you might be lonesome. Like Mr. Peavy has a wife at home, he doesn't get lonesome. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Last Thanksgiving, I would have taken you up on the invitation. Oh? Just happened that I was alone. We'd planned on having a turkey, but Mrs. Peavy went to visit her mother instead. Wish she'd visit, wish she'd visit her mother again this year. How's that? So you'd be lonesome enough to eat with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peavy, Mike is bound and determined to fill every place at the table. Hey, isn't that Mr. Bullard parking the big car out front? Yes, it is. Uh, he's coming in here. He's still alone. Why don't we give him another chance to eat with us? No, Mike. Maybe he wants to be coaxed. I do sometimes. I even get under the bed and won't come out. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Just for you, Mike, I'll ask him once more. Uh, how do you do, Peavy? Well, hello, Mr. Bullard. Hello, Mike. Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, hello. <laughs> what a cold fish. Go ahead, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ask him. Ask me what? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Bullard, if you'd care to reconsider, the invitation to dinner is still good. Well, thank you, Gildersleeve, but I have plans of my own. Well, we'd love to have you come to our house. Gildersleeve, stop nagging at me to come to your house. <laughs> You're all right. You have your dinner, and I'll have my party at the club. Oh, uh, Peavy, I want five pounds of your best after-dinner mints. My, my. Five pounds? You must be having a big party. Oh, yes, yes, I am. Thanksgiving is a day to gather your friends around you. And although I may not be considered popular by one of my neighbors, I have many friends. Uh, Peavy, make that ten pounds of mint. Ten pounds? <laughs> I'm glad I opened up today. Stuffed shirt. Must be inviting his whole club. Uh, how much will that be, Peavy? Well, it comes to seven dollars, but of course it's a lot of mints. You must not be having anything for dinner but mints. <laughs> Mike. Uh, there you are, Peavy. These mints should be the crowning touch after my friends and I enjoy a hearty meal. We're having vichyssoise, a tossed green salad with anchovies, roast pheasant, golden pheasant. You might. <laughs> Wild rice, of course, candied yams, and for dessert, flaming plum pudding. Mm, sounds mighty good. Mr. Gildersleeve, maybe he'd invite us to his dinner. <laughs> right, come with me. We have to pick up Leroy. <laughs> Thanks for picking me up, Unc. Well, it'll soon be time for turkey. Boy, did I work up an appetite sliding on the hill. I'm hungry, too. Me, too. Three of us will have a fine time. Isn't Mr. Bullard coming? No. Bullard's invited a lot of people out to his club for a fancy dinner. Vichy Schwarz. <laughs> Leroy, it was nice of you to take me down on the hill on your sled. Oh, that's okay. Forget it. I like you, Leroy. You do? Why? I don't know. I guess it's like Mrs. Foster says. She says little boys always want to be like big boys. Well, I I am getting pretty big, I guess. Uh, Mike, someday you'll be as big as Leroy. I don't know if I'll ever get that big. <laughs> you know, Mike, I sort of like you, too. Thank you. Hey, we're coming close to where I live. Yeah, that's your home, my boy. Hey, Uncle, stop the car. You are, Leroy. Just stop the car. Well, you all right. Why are we stopping here? I haven't had dinner yet. Uh, yes, Leroy, why are we stopping? Unc, could we get some more little kids like Mike and take them home to dinner? Leroy, that's a wonderful idea. Oh, boy. Leroy, can I go in and see who's there? Sure. Caddy, Unc. You bet. Run on in, Mike, and round up a car full. We'll wait. Oh, boy, I've been wanting to invite somebody. Yeah, what a fine little fellow. Yeah, he's okay. And Leroy. Yeah? There's another fine fellow sitting right next to me. Oh, heck. Gosh. <laughs> Gee, Unc, that's the way to have Thanksgiving. Yes, sir. Invite people to dinner who'll appreciate it. The heck with Bullard. Let him have his big dinner with all his fine friends. Hey, Mr. Gildersleeve, Leroy. Yeah, I didn't expect you back so soon, Mike. Where are all the kids, Mike? They've all gone out. They have? 
But do you know who's sitting in there with no place to go? Who? Mr. Bullard. Mr. Bullard. <laughs> Come on out, Mr. Bullard. They know you're in there. Well, what do you know? You imagine that. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Gildersleeve. Leave me, right? Hi. Hey, Mr. Bullard. You're the last man I expected to see here. Oh, well, I thought I'd come over and take some of the children to dinner. You're not the only one who can entertain friends. And, uh, well, good day. I think I'll take my mints and go home. You Wait a minute. Mr. Bullard. Yes? yes? Yeah, I thought you were going to have a big party at your club. Well, I intended to, Gildersleeve, but a lot of pushy people like you have taken all the children. Well, we didn't get our share. There's room for one more. You mean... Uh... Yeah, how many times do we have to ask you? <laughs> well, Come on, Mr. Bullard. I... I'll get in the back seat with you. All right, all right. Thank you, Leroy. Thank you. Right, George Bullard, this is a fine idea. I'm so glad you're going to be with us. Thank you, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Don't cry, Mr. Bullard. You have more friends than you thought you had. Yes, sir. There's something about Thanksgiving. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Have you tasted the two delicious new versions of Philadelphia brand cream cheese? Now you can get delicately rich Philadelphia cream cheese filled with spicy bits of chives and Philadelphia cream cheese with pieces of red pimento all through. Imagine the delicious variety of easy snacks and sandwiches you can make with these two new kinds of Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Try them tomorrow. Just be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand, and it's made and guaranteed fresh by Kraft. This is Gildersleeve again. Thanksgiving is a holiday we Americans cherish. It's a part of our national tradition. And more than that, it shows how our way of life in this country has always been linked so closely with religion. These days, I think we all realize how important it is that we strengthen our faith for ourselves and our children. Take someone to church this week. You'll both be richer for it. Good night. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gordon, Tommy Reddig, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. In a sandwich, what do you like best? Say, in a cold beef sandwich, a cheese sandwich, egg salad, salami, what do you like best? Well, if you've ever tried it, I bet you'll say Kraft's prepared mustard. Because when you add a little Kraft mustard, you add a lot of tang. In fact, there are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. And remember, the next time you make a sandwich, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Buy Kraft's prepared mustard. <laughs> Groucho Marx, you bet your life.